Welcome to another segment of Free Your Mind, people. Remember, as long as the mind is a slave, the body can never be free. I continue to thank you guys all for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch this Free Your Mind show. That's what it's all about, Free Your Mind. And as you can see, we have an amazing guest in the studio, you guys, and uh, somebody that you've all wanted on the show. If anybody needs to free their mind, this brother right here to my right. We're welcoming King Rick, the black general of the original Black Panthers. King, thank you for being on the show, my brother. No problem, black man. Power to the people. Power to all the people out there. So let's get this, let's get this party started, King. Uh, let's do it. Who is King Rick? Well, he is an individual who was uh, raised in Milwaukee. That's been part of the Black Panther platform and family for about 45 years now as a Panther Cub to the Black Panther Militia <coughs> and now to the original Black Panthers of Milwaukee. I've been active in this community for quite a while. I've been a part of this community for quite a while. And you know, I'm just an individual who wants to provide and protect for the Queens, the family, and community by any means necessary. Because Complete Village is our family. Complete Village is our family, people. You know, King, uh, one of the things I wanted to accomplish doing this show is to kind of clear the air on uh, who you really are, because there is a misconception out there, <laughs> intentionally <laughs> or not. Okay, well, I mean, our bloodline uh, flows from the original Black Panther Party for Self-Defense that was founded in 1966 by Huey P. and Bobby Seale. The chapter here was in Milwaukee, and I was just blessed to be part of uh, part of it as being a Panther Cub. I was fed, bred, and educated at the table of the Panther. So, yeah, I've been active in being a part of it, and it's just in the bloodline. You know, our ideas and beliefs come from the Black Panther Party itself. You, know, you can't you can't reinvent the wheel. You just, you just have to make it run better and different. That's that's our goal. That's what we're trying to do, and keep the ideas of the of the of the party intact. And so, uh, you're totally different. What about the new Black Panther? Is that? Well, the new Black Panthers, uh, shout out to them, my brother Aaron. A lot of people don't know that the Black Panther militia started the new Black Panther Party. A lot of people don't know that. Man McGee and I, and I just traveled down to Texas and met with brother Aaron. And we had the Black Panther militia in Milwaukee, and we wanted to to do something similar to that. So the commander suggested that he start the new Black Panther Party. That's part of history that a lot of people don't even know about. I didn't know. I know you didn't. <laughs> speaking of King, speaking of Commander McGee, mm -hmm. is it a myth or an urban legend, or did, which one is it, that you were his bodyguard? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a fact. That's a fact? That's a fact. I've known Commander since I was a kid. Grew up um, under his wing. And I used to work for him at City Hall, play in the uh, morning league that he helped found it. And then when he decided to start the Black Panther Militia, you know, I was his personal bodyguard. Traveled all over the country, been on 60 Minutes with him a lot. So, yeah, a lot of what I know, I owe to to the commander, Tejou, and others in the community. So, yeah, Another they, brother. Yeah, Tejou. They taught right. me how to be a man. That's my godfather. <laughs> a lot of people don't know if you ever been after World Festival back in the day when you had the African village with the mask. Yeah, yeah. He and I made that. That's amazing. That's, and everybody know about that big head, that big. That's part of history. That whole village we made. Wow, that's amazing. I'll tell you, that's another brother, man. He, he he's an amazing brother. Always in white. Yes. That's because he's a, a a medicine man. He's a reactor. Okay. That's why he wears white all the time. That's a, that, that's I always wanted to know that. Yeah. That he's the only person that ever. He's in herbal medicine. So. And, and, and the commander used to be on the radio quite a bit too. Did he yeah, have a radio show? He had a show called The Word Warriors on uh, WNRB. Yeah, so there's a little history for y'all, in case y'all didn't see. Look at look it up. You see this brother, he's the big guy and standing in the back. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I was a lot younger then, a lot thinner, but yeah, I was there. Yeah, he lost, he, he gained a few pounds. Uh, we'll, we'll pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Panther Hour. Is that Black something Panther that you Power do? Hour, yes sir. Power Hour, okay. Yeah, we do that every Friday on the uh, Revolutionary Network with my co-host, uh, we call him the mayor. Kevin Barnes, you know, we tackle issues, we call people out, we let people know what the Black Panther Party is about, the original Black Panther Party. We invite them and we inspire and we educate. You know, we gotta let people know the truth because you won't get the complete truth on, on any other medium but ours. Because we're unfiltered. <coughs> and, and King, when is that time for that show? 7.30 every Friday on the Revolutionary Network. I'll give you the details. Uh, Carl can probably look that up for us. Okay, get um, that, get that. Yeah, man, with the letters out there. Where, man? Well, let's get to the nitty gritty of the show. Let's do it. <laughs> Urban legend of fact, and I stole that from you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, King, you recently had a meeting with the uh, certain individuals from the black community where you were offered money. Yes. To leave particular politicians and others alone. Yes. Urban legend of fact. That's fact. Elaborate. Well, you know, we were out here um, holding uh, politicians accountable, to certain individuals in the, in the community, and, and these bureaucrats and these people that are pulling the strings for the puppets don't want that to be known. So these black bourgeois type of individuals. Say it again. Bourgeois. That's a French word. I speak fluent French. They wanted to get together and then say, call me into a meeting at the round table, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to leave certain politicians alone. And they offered me money okay. across the table. Wow. I yes. told them, no, you can't buy us out. We're not for sale. Wow. So they really want to shut you up. Because I speak the truth and I'm not afraid to speak the truth. That's amazing, uh, people. You got an individual here, a rare individual here, who won't take money, who won't sell out the community. No. That's something you never hear of today. No. And we got a long list of folks, and I'm gonna let you let you go at them because they need to be <laughs> they need to be called out. They need to be exposed, of course. They need to be exposed, and uh, you continue to call for. Uh, let me get to this point. You continue to call for the resignation right. of Mayor Tom Barry. Yes, bad and news Barry. Bad news, Barry. <laughs> And Common Council President Ashanti Hamilton. Ineffective Hamilton. Ineffective Hamilton. <laughs> he got personal names for y'all out there. And tune in, brothers, because he's here. He's the hell that job. And he had it. He'd he be here. And not only them two, but other elected officials. And what's up with that? Is that something personal? What's going on with that? Yeah, it's personal when you're not taking care of the community the way you're supposed to. You're sitting here taking kickbacks. You're sitting here being the mayor's lapdog and puppets and allowing the <clears throat> black and brown community to suffer. Because if you look downtown, you've got billions of dollars worth of infrastructure. Mayor Bear calls downtown Milwaukee the jewel of the city. What about the black and brown community? You've got billions going in there, but you've got tons for us. That's not fair at all. And I'm going to hold those people accountable because what you're doing is you're telling me that black and brown doesn't matter to you. Just downtown Milwaukee. The mayor says Milwaukee is a city of inclusion. It's not a city of inclusion. It's a city of illusion. And the, the politicians, the elected city, Politicians are sitting on his lap like lap dog and saying, Yes, I'm Master Barrett, whatever you want, Master Barrett, and the people are suffering. So that's why I'm, I'm on politicians' asses. They need to understand that the community is suffering, the community is hurting, and you all are sitting at the city hall getting these kickbacks, making all this money, and not doing anything. Because if you look at the streets, there's mega potholes in the streets. There's crime. We're the most hyper segregated city in the United States, the highest car incarceration rates. The worst place to raise a black male and a black family and a black child in, 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 the, in, the, in the country in a little bit of Milwaukee. And people are, are cool with that? No, I'm not cool with that. And you politicians, you can change all that if you want to. And this debacle with the, the lead laterals in the water, mm -hmm. the only reason that they even said anything about it was because they got caught. Got caught. Got caught. Yep. Had they not been caught, uh, all of this still wouldn't have gone on, and thousands of our children were poisoned, didn't even know it. They, they, they weren't even notified of people are happy about that. The churches aren't saying anything, the community-based organizations aren't saying anything, these fake-ass community activists aren't saying anything. Hey, Kate, why is that? Why are you not saying that? <laughs> Political favors, kickbacks, grant money. Now y'all, y'all being called out, now y'all need to answer to that. Because you got constituents out there who you need to, is election time coming? 2020. Get woke to vote. 